Rejoice and be glad, for today the Lord has made. It is the uh, 11th of uh, February, 2020, and the topic uh, that came to my heart was salvation. It's a subject that, that really, I mean, we have so many ways that seem that there's only one way. Christ is the way. There is no other way. It's not by uh, water baptism. It's not by uh, works. Not by church attendance or whatever religion that you go in a certain denomination over others. There's only one body, and that's uh, Paul the Apostle, Romans through Philemon. Anything else is uh, most likely he's talking to Israel. And the, uh, Jacob's sorrow, which is a uh, great many people say is tribulation. Well, tribulation is the last three and a half years called Great Tribulation by Jesus Christ. But salvation is the subject that's on my heart. What does the Bible say about this? Okay. So let's let's get into and see what it says. Genesis 4, King James Version. That's the only thing I, I like to uh, to go by is with the, with the King James Version. It's uh, what I have. You can see that. That's my, my King James Version. 1611. And let's start with uh, verse 3. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the, fir of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. Okay, so now they know that they have to make an offering unto God. So Cain, by the sweat of his brow, brought everything that he had worked on and brought it in to make an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought the firstlings of his flock, uh, a lamb, and also told that that's the meaning of why it was a lamp, and of the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering, but unto Cain and his offering he had not respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. Evil offering is what you're seeing right here. Uh, represents a point of the Christ. Christ is the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Cain sits here as sits here we see as has no blood. Cain sacrificed an animal. Adam and Eve uh, uh, animal skin were given to them, which means blood was shed for Adam and Eve. Cain is doing it by his own work, his own hands, by him. He is, his offering is his own works. Cain, his sister, is in the dark. He's sister, he's doing it by, he's got pride and ego there. Abel, on the other hand, is relying on the shed blood, which is a pointer to the coming Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who will put on flesh, walk, as the scriptures say, walk among us. The living word is the blood of a, but a human being, the God himself comes down, takes the punishment that we deserve on himself so that the law is fulfilled for well, it was but unto Cain his offering he had not respect and Cain was very wroth and his gotten as well why did God reject it there was no blood okay Abel had blood of the lamb that he shed God had respect for that because God under saw that Abel understood that there must be blood so we see and Cain talked uh, was Abel his brother, and it came to pass when they were in the field that Cain rose up against Abel his brother and killed him. He slew him. Evil blood called to God. God asked, and uh, Cain, where's your brother? And he said, am I my brother's keeper? Yes, we are. And he sits there, and God says to him, why doesn't, does uh, the blood of your brother cry out from the ground that you have slain him? So God knew that... Uh, Abel had been, because Abel was now in the presence of God. Jesus' blood calls to us. So even as Abel's blood God calls to God, the blood of Jesus Christ calls to us so that you can't say, well, no one told me about Jesus. Well, I'm sorry, but the blood of Jesus is calling to us today to come to repentance, coming to an understanding of what he did on the cross, that he fulfilled the scriptures, not uh, uh, doing away with them, but he finished them on the cross. That he, the scriptures, uh, the law says we needed a savior because that's what the law did. It's, it showed that we were sinners and that we needed a salvation. We needed a, a, a substitute to take our sins from us. And Jesus' blood calls to us today. So that's scripture. 
is one of, is the scripture. Revelation 5, King James 6. And I behold, and lo, in the midst of the throne and of the Lamb, of, uh, and then the, of the throne, and of the four beasts, and in the midst of the elders, to the Lamb. And see, there's that Lamb again, the image of Christ. As it had been slain. Sorry. I get a little bit uh, joyful. And I get to talking about Jesus, and I get, to, I get to speaking too much, and I dry my throat out. In the midst of the elders stood a lamb, as it had been slain. Okay, remember? He takes away the sins of the world. That's why he was slain. Remember Genesis and Abel, the, the lamb that was shed, the blood, having seven horn, horns and seven uh, eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent forth into all the worlds. In other words, there's nothing in this world that God does not see. As it was in Genesis, so it is in Revelation, with a lamb slain for the sins of the world. What, what I'm talking about this, this uh, blood and all. Hebrews 9.22 And almost all things are by the law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood, what that is no remission. So the shedding of the blood was very important. And we'll see that as it comes further. Romans wrote, and all who, and who is Paul talking to on Romans wrote? Romans is, Paul is himself a Roman. So Paul is actually talking to his fellow Jew. Paul's first desire to go to the Jew first, but he was called by Jesus Christ to go to Gentile. Paul still goes to the Jew first, hoping that he can get some of his uh, fellow countrymen and, and brothers to come into, and uh, through them, the, the women, uh, to come into an understanding of who Jesus Christ is. Romans 10.1 is the start of who you know uh, Paul is talking to. So it's brethren. Uh, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel. So you, uh, this right here tells you that who is Paul talking to? Is that they might be saved. Paul is talking with his first love to his, his fellow countrymen that they might come to the understanding of the grace of God, who Jesus is, the Messiah, who came, put on flesh, fulfilled the scriptures, and was crucified. That if thou shalt confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Okay, that's 9. Verse 10. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Therefore, confessing what you have in your heart, you are declaring what you value. For whosoever, as this is the, the one line, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That sounds great, but that's not what Paul is saying here. Keep in context. Notice what comes next. Okay. See that? Notice what comes next. Verse 14. How then shall they, Israel, call on him, Christ, in whom they have not believed? Therefore, they can't call on Jesus Christ, even as Peter, when Peter was talking uh, in, Ver in Acts 2, we'll see, 3,000 people came to believe in Jesus Christ. They repented. They wanted uh, Christ to come into them. So Peter is the first one who brings in uh, believers into the body of Christ. A lot of people out there have teachings that uh, Paul is the only one who, who uh, brings in people to the body of Christ. Peter was uh, to the circumcised. That's true. But in the very beginning, he said Sir Peter was able to get the Jews to recognize Jesus was the Messiah, that whom he had, that God, whom God raised up three days later, and whom they sit to over 500 witnessed, and they had the chance there to sit there and repent like Nineveh, that if they had repented, then they could have gone right into the Daniel 70th week, but because they rejected uh, the the, uh, the word of the Lord, uh, and stoned Stephen, who was Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul the Apostle, uh, they sit there and missed the opportunity. How then shall they call on him... Jesus, in whom they have not believed. But it goes on further, further and says, And how shall they believe in him, Christ, of whom they have not heard? If they haven't even heard, because they're not, they're putting everyone, the, the uh, apostles and believers, as Paul was, uh, as Saul, 
that Saul was gathering up these um, Christian believers that sit there that believed in the, uh, uh, well, they weren't really called Christians, they were followers of Jesus Christ, uh, and they were persecuting and putting them in the prison because they would sit there, that to them was uh, blasphemy because it was uh, 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 believing in a man, Christ, instead of God first. It, it, uh, he was a curse. That's the reason he was on the, uh, he, he was sinful, so that he was a curse. Therefore, they sit there is was uh, uh, idolatry. That they sit there and they were worshiping a man before God. This Christ who sits there, this uh, teachings were you know, sit there so disturbing that the, the the Sanhedrin had him arrested and put to death. Whom they have not heard, and then it goes and finishes finishes with, and how should they hear without a preacher? So you see, Paul is uh, here in Romans. Uh, 10, he sits here, he starts out with 10, 1, to his prayers to Israel, that uh, the, the, a great many people out there, just a bloodless uh, salvation, just call on the name of the Lord. Well, now you're taking Genesis and you're throwing out what the book says. Without the, uh, the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So you sit there, you've got to understand the full gospel. You've got to have that blood, faith in the blood. We'll see in, in just a little bit. Which is down here, Romans 3.25, is left out just as Cain. Cain, what did he leave out? The blood. So if we take Romans 3.25 and read it, whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, a substitute, it is Christ who takes your place, that the law says you are condemned, you're guilty, cast out into uh, the lake of fire for eternity. That's the sin of sin. But Christ is your propitiation. He is your Savior. That's what the law says. You need you need to be. Uh, the law says you're guilty. Christ says yes, you're guilty. I take that uh, and pay that uh, price in full with my blood. Okay, faith to be uh, propitiated through faith in His blood, not on your works, not in things you do, but in the work of Christ on the cross. That the blood shed was the Lamb of God who takes to be a propitiation, one who receives punishment for you, that the punishment is, is uh, meets the law, it's fulfilled, your uh, sins are forgiven, you become a, a believer in Christ, uh, it's until the day of redemption, one saved, always saved. Uh, you sit there, you don't do works to keep your salvation, you do works to proclaim Christ, that you are now an ambassador for Jesus Christ. That's why you preach. That's why you sit down. You see me preaching, is to give Christ the credit that He is due to lift up God, as Andy Wood says. Three things we do: glorify God, glorify the body of Christ, and do the Great Commission: preach the gospel to the lost. So faith in His His blood to declare His righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God, and this takes care of the future as well. So we go then forward into Acts 2. Peter brings into the body of Christ 3,000. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see this? This is the kingdom of heaven. Okay. 23. Him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God, you have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain. This is uh, Peter talking to the Jews whom God had raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. He's overcome death. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, and said unto Peter, and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus, for the remissions of sin, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. This is Acts 2. Acts uh, 9 is when Paul was converted. This is the kingdom of heaven. When Jesus Christ walked, and you sit there, and you do, do like me. Take your take your Bible, and let's go to Matthew. Right there, that's one, it's the first one that uh, of the New Testament. Okay? And let's go into Matthew 10. And let's go into Matthew 10, 5. And Matthew 10, 5 says this, and part of it goes into red. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, and now the, it goes to red in my Bible, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and enter enter, and into any city of the Sumerians, 
and to you not. Verse 6, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Okay? That is the commission. That is what Jesus did. So the whole time that he is here, he's to the Jews, for the Jews, to be king of the Jews, to set up his kingdom, which would then last for the thousand years. The stoning of Stephen is where uh, Christ puts the, the nation of Israel on pause. And he goes to Saul of Tarsus, who is persecuting the early church, converts Paul on the road to Damascus, and he becomes the apostle taking Judas place. Now when they heard this, then Peter said to him, And ye shall receive the Holy Ghost. That is the kingdom of heaven presented if Jews accept it. Saul has not been converted until Acts 9. What am I talking about? Here is Acts 9. And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest. This is the temple of Jerusalem. It desired of him letters to Damascus to the synagogue. That he found any of his of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound into Jerusalem for trial. And he journeyed. And as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined about him a light from heaven. Okay. And he fell to the ground and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecute? Is thou me? And he, Saul, said unto Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. Okay? So Saul now, a Pharisee, whom the Lord did not like, believing in the Talmud with extra oral tradition from the rabbis, plus the Ten Commandments, has now taken and converted Paul. And he's going to teach him. Christ gives Paul seven mysteries to preach, and the gospel of grace is now given to Gentiles. That we will be offered to that will, that will be offered to the Jew and uh, be in Gentile one body. So there is only one body: the Jew and Gentile. Paul likes to go to the Jew first. He still has in his heart the love for the Jews that they should be brought in, but he understands his ministry is to the Gentiles. He simply goes to the Jew first, and then uh, to the Gentile. So neither is neither Jew nor Gentile eventually, where there is only one body. That one body is Christ, is the head of that body. Paul is also shown the harpazo and the snatching away. This is specific to those who believe in Christ, who do not go in the time of Jacob's uh, sorrow, which is the seven years and it's now been at uh, uh, Christ being cut off at 69 weeks. When he received on Palm Sunday, he then arrested and then crucified. So at 83 years, uh, 483 years, uh, he short seven years. So the seven years yet to be uh, given to Israel, that's what Daniel prophesied. He doesn't prophesy to the world. He prophesies to Israel in the city of Jerusalem. So when you understand that and understand Matthew 10, 5, Christ was coming toward the Jew. They were supposed to be the priests to the, to the world, to go to the four corners preaching the gospel. He's going to change that with the 144,000, the two witnesses in Jerusalem. And it's going to be the first three and a half years. It's going to be to the Jew first and the Gentile second. And which is anyone who sits here is non-Jew, who sits here called on the name of the Lord. The difference is it's time of uh, uh, Jacob's uh, uh, beheadings will come that you will have to shed your own blood. Right now we're in the grace, uh, age of grace. The grace is God, Son, Jesus has shed his blood. We, therefore, uh, the grace, uh, receive a gift which is the Son, that God so loved the world that he gave his Son, that whosoever believeth should not perish but have life everlasting. Christ has paid, the, uh, taken the pain on himself. He suffered the whipping. He suffered the cross. We, simply by faith in the work of Christ, seeing that his blood is shed, which the pressure blots out the, your sin, that's where you come in. Okay? Here now is what is Paul's salvation in Corinthians. Paul's gospel is grace alone, not of any work. Okay? So it's 1 Corinthians 15, and it's verse 1 through 4. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preach unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand. And this is a, a really a, by which also you have, are saved. This is what has saved you. 
if you keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. For I, Saul of Tarsus, became Paul the Apostle, uh, unto you, first of all, which I also received. For I, which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures. Genesis, the Lamb of God was slain, whose blood is shed for the remissions of sin, crucified uh, on the cross, shedding his blood, okay, that he was then buried, and then he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. These were all according to the Scriptures. Remember how Scripture shows that we go back to Genesis and Revelation, how God declared the need. It's that blood that sits in your faith in his blood that takes your sins away from you. And Christ fulfilled Scripture. He did exactly what uh, uh, the Father walked, uh, asked him. And I, I put a, a note, verse 2, by which you are saved. This is the place where it says you are saved. If When you sit here and you look at the uh, uh, Romans 10, where it says that whosoever shall call on the Lord shall be saved, that's conditional. If you have faith in the Lord, Christ, when uh, Paul was saying that, he was talking to Jews as if Peter had, that they had re uh, repented and understood that they needed to repent because of what they had done to Christ. By the time he gets to Paul in verse uh, 9, after his conversion, the hearts of the Jewish people have hardened. The Sanhedrin have so taken the, the, the people that they reject now this teaching of Christ as the Messiah that now it's idolatry that you're worshiping Jesus is that uh, uh, you're putting man, you're worshiping a man and therefore you should be put to death. And that's what they were doing with the apostles and such because it's now Noahide laws which have now come back into existence by Israel, by the Sanhedrin, the same thing, they're saying that if you believe in Jesus Christ during the time of tribulation, uh, which is actually Jacob's uh, sorrow in the first half, tribulation in the last half, well then Israel is the one, the Jews will have the right to behead you. Because you're into idolatry, you believe in Jesus Christ as a, a man who was accursed and crucified. They can't see that he was crucified for their iniquities, their transgressions to take away and blot out with his shed blood being the Lamb of God. Okay? Ephesians 4.30 And grieve not the Holy, the, the Holy Spirit of God where you are sealed unto the day of redemption. This is where so many people think you've got to do works. No. What Ephesians 30 just says, Grieve not the Holy Spirit whereby you are sealed. The Holy Spirit seals you unto the day of redemption. That's when Christ comes and the clouds, uh, to, uh, with the shout of the archangel, the dead in Christ rise first, then we who are alive, that is our day of redemption. He bought ours with his blood. He shed blood is what bought our, our, our souls to sit there to be able to call and to have faith in him. Our redemption is until the day of redemption and from then to eternity. Ephesians 1, And whom ye also trust are after that ye heard uh, the word of truth the gospel of your salvation, in whom also you have believed. He said that you have to believe. Ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise. Again, he seals you. He comes into your heart. You change. My words change. When I was an alcoholic, I a cursed, profane. You change. Those words change. The people you hang out with change. You sit there and start reading the Bible. You start uh, sit there and fellowship with others. They're in the Scripture which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. We are that purchased possession. Christ will purchase us with his blood unto the praise of his glory. 1 John 5 And this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. Therefore we have eternal, just like God's uh, covenant with Israel is everlasting, eternal. The such a the uh, uh, replacement theology that everywhere it says Israel put church is a false doctrine. It's eternal. Life was Christ through the shed blood he shed on the cross as eternal was God. God keeps his word. Israel is the one that sits there and rejected God. God has kept his promise and the promise is still there. For an everlasting covenant he has made with Israel, they will repent and they will come to be 
uh, the priests are to uh, Christ when he sits on the throne of David in the millennial kingdom. He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God, he has not life. They're dead. You who are dead like me and call on Christ, we went from being dead to the resurrection of Christ to his resurrection and his righteousness. God sees the righteousness of his Son. We can enter into the kingdom of God through the work of the cross. What have we seen? In Acts 2, offer the kingdom of heaven to Israel and 3,000 repent and get baptized. Do Paul in Romans 10 is talking to Israel and they are not repenting so he is scolding them for lack of faith. Peter offered the kingdom of heaven. Paul offered the kingdom of grace. There are two different kingdoms. You have to see that. Why are they different? Because Israel had rejected Stephen and stoned him. Thus they had rejected God, his son, and the Holy Spirit. Romans to Philemon is the gospel we walk under being Paul is our apostle. As Peter went to the circumcised, the Jew, and Paul to Gentiles, and then Jew and Gentile being one body. Okay? That then is what we see. As the salvation that God has put before us. Okay? At this time, I want you to go with me and let's, let's refresh just what we, we learned. We learned in Genesis that uh, Abel uh, understood the salvation with the, with the shedding of blood, which was a pretext, a pre-Christ coming, in which Christ would be the Lamb of God who would shed his blood. Abel was correct. He understood the blood. Cain had no blood. Cain was relying on his own works, his own sweat of the bow, what he did. Abel relied on what Christ did. Okay. We see with Peter, 3,000 come in. It's the kingdom of heaven to the Jews to be priests. Uh, 3,000 are added. To Paul, we see in uh, Romans 10 there, that he's talking to the Jews whose heart now has been hardened. Because he's, verse uh, uh, Acts uh, 9, Peter is then, uh, uh, Paul is uh, uh, brought into the, uh, the apostleship of Christ. So he was persecuting. He took the, the, the Saul, who was persecuting to death the early church, opens his eyes, and now Paul preaches to the, to the Gentiles. Which, if you remember, in Matthew 10, 5, Christ said, go to the lost sheep of Israel, not to the Gentiles or the Samaritans. So the, 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 the whole Bible is showing us that there's a kingdom of heaven which the Jews were supposed to bring in, which they didn't, which they will do in the millennium, is that Christ will come and set up his kingdom at the end of the 70th week of Daniel. But before the Jewish people, not the church of Christ, not the body of Christ, but for the Jewish people who are Orthodox, who heart has been hardened, Jacob sorrow is coming. And that's what Chuck Mishler says. We've got to get our uh, linguistics down. Uh, revelation with tribulation is at the last three and a half. Jesus calls the last three and a half years of, tri of the Jacob sorrow as great tribulation. But the whole seven years is known as Jacob sorrow because it's to Israel. That's who Daniel the prophet is talking to. His people, Israel, and the city, Jerusalem. Not Moscow, not Washington, D.C. To Jerusalem. So it's to the Jewish people that to purify them, they go through fire. And what has happened, the iniquities in the metals and everything come out to the torque. The, the iniquities are, are taken out. They're purified. The gold and the silver is purified. The gems are made pure, hardened. They're made to be uh, more pure. So the, the whole thing of uh, Jacob's time is for Israel, not for the body of Christ. That's where the Harpazo come. That's what P Paul the Apostle says, the dead in Christ uh, shall rise first. We who are alive will meet the Lord in the air. That's our uh, taking of claiming his possession with he paid for in the blood, taking them to uh, the third heaven, the kingdom of God that we go to. 
and then the portal show uh, it shuts up so the portal opens for christ to come down gather his possession that he paid for go back into the kingdom of god the door shuts there's probably a gap with the there the uh, great many scholars have uh, shown uh, and then the man of sin come down a covenant with israel is made for seven years first three and a half years uh, is, the, is the temple is rebuilt and the sa animal sacrifice was not really needed because Jesus was that, that sacrifice that takes away the sin. And then he's wounded in the head. Uh, the man of sin and, and, uh, come, uh, falls and the man of perdition comes because Satan is cast out of heaven and there's war in heaven. Michael and his angels overcome the, uh, the, drag, the dragon. I'm talking too fast again. And he's cast down to the earth. Woe unto the inhabitants of the earth. Because his wrath. His wrath. The dragon. Persecutes the woman Israel. And three and a half years in. Uh, they flee to Petra. They understand that the man of sin. Is now the perdition. The, the Zionists are looking. They're actually wanting the Zionists. Uh, to bring the man of, of uh, perdition into. Because if right after that. After three and a half years of his rule. At the Battle of Armageddon, Christ comes down. And the Battle of Armageddon is to uh, armies to fight Christ as he comes at his second coming. To set up his kingdom for this uh, 1,000 years. And that are defeated in the blink of an eye. And the, the false prophet and the, and the dragon are, are uh, arrested. And the dragon is cast into a bottomless pit uh, for 1,000 years. And then uh, released at the after the... Uh, the white uh, uh, release, and then it sits at the white throne judgment, and then we sit to go into uh, a new earth and a new heaven for eternity with the, with Christ and God. So this, to me, is is the gospel. This is the salvation which is there in the scripture. It's not that I sit here. I'm I'm trying to bash or trying to. I'm trying to show, edify the body, which Andy says, glorify God, which is Christ His Son. His son's blood was precious. That's why edify God is the blood there. It's the blood that sits there that gets us into God, the Father. It's the righteousness of his son is put upon us, not through works. We do work that belong to Christ. Everything I do belongs to Christ. It's him working through me. His light in me, you should be seeing. Then it's what? That's the end. Well, that's the gospel which I'm trying to do now. So the salvation that that seeks to to call you is that little small voice that's saying it's time to get right with God. And you have to know Jesus Christ. You have to know that He shed His blood to save you. That He gave up His life that you can live. That the punishment for you and me was paid for at the cross by Christ. That His blood now gives us the, the opening as is Passover with the land's blood on the door. The death passed over the, the house of Israel. And the firstborn was only to the died where the uh, was the uh, Egyptian. Well, the firstborn of God sit there for the Jews was Christ who came to the same thing with the Passover to give them the opportunity to overcome death with the Christ taking death upon himself to giving them life everlasting. We Gentiles have been offered that. But it's going to be go back to the to the Jewish people because that's God had called them a people unto himself. The marriage is simply in a state of, of, uh, of null right now. But God has not forsaken Israel. God sits there, kept his part of the bargain. Israel is the one that rejected the son. And then they sit there hard in their heart. And Stephen preaching with the Holy Spirit. They rejected God through the prophets, Christ and himself in the flesh. And then Stephen with the Holy Spirit. If you sit there and you see what I'm speaking about, that Holy Spirit is going to talk to you. It did to me. And it's going to make you sit there and search that there's more to life. That this body is made out of dust, but your soul is made in the image of God. It's that image of God that Christ came for to bring the, uh, your soul back to God the Father. It's free will though. You have to see it. I can't force you. The old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make the horse drink it. It's true. Only the Holy Spirit can make you see the truth. And by this truth, you are set free. I pray today that you sit there and you understand that 
the kingdom of heaven is at hand, that it's going to sit you at the time of the Gentile is going to end, and then there's going to be a gap because what's going to happen is the harpazo, the, the snatching of uh, the possession, what God had, owns, the dead in Christ, those who believe in Christ will rise first because there, he has the key to death everlasting. Death has no hold on him. Then we who are alive will be transformed. We will put on glorified body to meet the Lord in the air, enter back into the kingdom of God, and it will shut. And seven years later, he will come back with his army uh, to set up his kingdom on, the, on earth, sitting on the throne of David in Jerusalem. And Jerusalem will be the capital of the world. A one world government will then will be set up by the Son of God. Choose wisely. I hope these words and the, the Spirit speaking shows you the need for the blood, the understanding of what that blood does for you, your faith in that blood, and then your faith that He is Christ, whom God has raised. It's a thing. Maranatha, God bless.